let's talk about uh, um, how that gets uh, associated with these sites. We haven't seen the content type hub site yet, but that's one place where the document feature really needs to be activated, right? Because that's going to be the content types that drive our records management decisions. With record center sites, the doc ID feature is automatically turned on when we use the record center site template. The document center site is turned on automatically, but for our collaboration sites, it's not. So we want to make sure that it's turned on for our collaboration sites. Another concept that we need to get out of the way is this notion of content type syndication. Okay. The advantages are that the content types are available farm wide and can be used in any different site collections in the farm that ensures our cross farm uh, consistency. And we can selectively publish those content types. And the content administrator, the one publishing these types, can then control how these content types are used. <laughs> so what do I mean by content type syndication? If you go back over to Internet Explorer, you'll see a couple things. One is that I've created a separate site collection <coughs> for managing our content types. And here I'm using a fictional com company, Acme um, Corporation. <coughs> and the, the only purpose of this site collection is to publish our content types. A right? couple things. If I go over to Central Admin <coughs> and I'll see in the application management section, right? Um, if I look at our site collections, actually, if I I want to look at <coughs> all of the site collections that we've created here, you'll see that I've got. Um, in addition to some of the other sites, we're going to be creating a record center site as part of as a separate site collection. But the the key point here is that I'm creating the content type hub <laughs> as its own site collection, not as a sub site within some other site collection. Okay, it's kind of a best practice. We want to just reserve that site collection just for content type publishing. Okay, so let's go back to application management and central admin and see how this is set up. <coughs> One of the things that you become familiar with as you're defi defining this and setting up this infrastructure is that we want to use um, this uh, managed metadata service to take advantage of some of the capabilities that it provides. So in our list of uh, service applications, you'll see that there's this managed metadata service. If I look at its properties here and scroll down, you'll see that I've created a content type hub and pointed it at that content type, I'm at that site collection. So the steps here are create the site collection, right? And then we want to configure it in central admin as a content type hub, okay? So that the managed metadata service will know uh, where to retrieve the content types so that they can then be pushed out and published to the other site collections in the farm. Now there's a couple of preliminary steps that have to happen. So as I've created this content types um, site collection, one of the things that we need to do, as with most things in SharePoint, is we want to ensure that the um, content type syndication hub feature has been activated. And you'll see here that I've activated it. It's not activated by default. So as we go into this process, we'll create this site collection. And then we come in and turn on this feature so that we get the functionality uh, that allows it to be uh, recognized as a content type syndication hub. Once we do that, we get some additional links in the site collection administration section. And we have some options for defining how our content types are published. Okay? And here we have an option of automatically refreshing any published content types whenever uh, that um, timer job runs. Okay? And I'll show you that timer job in just a second. Okay? We have some error log publishing so that we can diagnose um, 
problems that might crop up when we're trying to publish our content types. But if we've done everything successfully, we've configured the content type hub site in Central Admin, we'll see that the Managed Metadata Service here recognizes a particular page that's going to be used in order to uh, manage our subscribed content types. And you'll see here that we currently have no content types that have actually been subscribed. I'm going to flip back over to Central Admin again and go back into our um, service applications and look at one more property. Uh, if you're not familiar with the way service applications work, we have the, the basic service and then we have one or more proxy services that are used to actually connect the service to various clients of the service. And so I can select each one of these. I'm going to select the proxy this time and look at its properties. There's one checkbox that we have to make sure is checked. Okay, And this is basically enabling the publishing to happen. Once we've designated the content type um, hub in the service application, then the proxy, in the proxy we have the option to specify that that proxy actually will consume content types from that particular content type gallery. Okay, So by default this is unchecked. So after we've configured it we have to ensure that it is checked and that way the timer jobs that I'm going to show you next will be able to find where the content types are coming from and where the content types are being pushed to based on the current configuration of the farm. So if I flip over quickly to the monitoring section and review the job definitions, you'll see that there are a number of different jobs here that are defined. And there are a couple that we're interested in uh, for content type publishing. One is this content type hub job. One thing to notice is that by default it's set to run only once per day, okay, with the assumption that um, we won't change these centralized content types very often, right? As we're setting this up, however, and in development mode, we'll probably need to come in here and manually run this um, job so that we will be able to see the content types that are being published. Once we've got them set up, then we can revert back to the, the default schedule and have it run um, as often as we wish. Typically, daily is good enough. Okay. Another job that's companion job with the content type job is the subscriber job. And you can see that there's a subscriber job for each of the web applications that we've got defined. Right. So if I go into the content type subscriber job for um, the web application in which we're creating all these site collections, uh, you'll see that it's defaulting to running once per hour, okay, with the idea that we may need those content types more often than they're, than they're actually being changed. And as we go through the process again, we'll probably come in here and run this timer job manually just so that we can see things um, set up uh, the way we want. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is go in and create some content types. I'm not going to do that quite yet, but I'll show you where we're going to go. Is that we're going to come in here and we're going to create some content types. Now there's some things that we need to do in advance of that um, that I'll talk about next in the slide and the slideshow. Um, but what we're going to ultimately do is we're going to define our enterprise-wide content types here. And we're going to set them up in such a way that we can then use them to drive the rules that we'll be applying uh, from our file plan.